So now we're going to practice, see the process for and practice balancing redox reactions. The method that we're going to learn is called the half reaction method and it's very systematic. You have a lot of steps but it's not a lot of problem solving. It is just a matter of can you count and can you follow these steps. A lot of places you can make mistakes but if you're careful and follow each step you will always end up with a balanced reaction. So before when we balance reactions all we cared about is do you have the same number of atoms on both sides of the reaction okay and that was all that we needed to do here we got to see that when you balance a redox reaction you've got to make sure more than just the atoms are balanced but you also have a um, balancing of the charges okay it's important to not only have the atoms but as it says here the number of electrons gained and lost must balance out. So if something is getting rid of two electrons and the other guy just wants three, we've got to make sure we have it all worked out to where the same number that are lost or given are gained or received. Okay? Um, so this half reaction method has a procedure and I'm going to show you the procedure. You should be copy these and have them in your notes in their entirety so that you can have them handy as we work through our examples here and then as you start practicing it because you're going to want to look at them, the rules step by step and then wean yourself from having to look at them. All right, so I'm going to outline the steps here. Like I said, lots of steps. Step one, um, you're going to write the unbalanced reaction um, in ionic form. In other words, you're going to get rid of spectator ions. Okay. Then you're going to separate the re equation into two half reactions. We'll see how to do that. The weird thing that we have to do here is to balance um, atoms, well, this isn't weird, balance the atoms other than oxygen and hydrogen in the normal way. Okay, there's nothing unusual about that. But what's weird is when you balance the oxygens, you add water molecules, and when you balance the hydrogens, you add H+. Now that's what you do if it's an acidic solution. There's going to be a, a little a subroutine that we're going to do if it's basic. We'll see what this is as we do in an example. Uh, you might want to stop and at any point write these down in your notes if you don't have a printout of them. After you've done that, then we're going to make sure that we balance the charges. The way you balance the charges on each side, so you'll have an arrow and you'll have things over here and things over here. You've got to make sure that if there's a negative 5 on this side, there's a negative 5 on this side. That would be balancing the charges. The two half reactions have got to be equalized by making sure the number of electrons gained and lost are the same. So we might have to multiply by the half reactions by some coefficient. Um, then we can add those together and here is a very important step. There is no reason why you can't know whether the reaction was actually balanced. Um, you can do a check, you can know. Maybe you made a mistake. I was working through these problems earlier today and I got to the end and I had made a mistake. So I know if I make a mistake because they have to have the atoms balanced as well as the charges. So we're going to go back to our um, light board here in a moment and do the uh, balance this one together, but before we balance it, I want you to choose which one of those is that first step, which is, or maybe it's the second step. Let me just look real quick. Is it the second step? Uh-oh. What did I do? I didn't mean to exit out of that. I hit the wrong button, apparently. So bear with me. Yeah, separate the ions into half reactions. So that's step number two there. So we've got our um, overall reaction. It's already given to you in ionic form. Spectator ions have been eliminated and we have that written out. And we want to find the half reactions. This is not hard to do. All you have to do is make sure that certain substances are on either side of the equation. So hopefully you picked the correct answer of C. And I'm going to go ahead and write those two half reactions here. Now when I write my half reactions, I like to make sure I have got plenty of room on either side to start adding stuff. Okay, so there is the Cr2O, I don't know why I wrote 2 there, Cr2O7, 2 minus, okay, and it is going to go to Cr3 plus, that's one half reaction. The other half reaction is C2O4, 
and it has a charge of 2 minus, and it's going to um, CO2, okay? So I have my two half reactions here. Um, the next thing that I want to do, and I'll just work through one in its entirety, the next thing I want to do is balance elements that are not oxygen or hydrogen. So that in this case would be chromium. There's two chromiums, there's only one chromium, so I'm going to put a two coefficient. There's nothing different about that. So we've now got the chromiums balanced, now we're ready to balance the oxygen. And what the rule says, in order to balance the oxygen, you add enough waters to balance it out. So I've got seven oxygens, how many waters would I need? Well each water has an oxygen, so I would need seven waters. So there it is. I've got my oxygens balanced. What's the next thing to balance? The next thing to balance is hydrogen. Well, there wasn't any hydrogen here, but when we added water, there suddenly became some hydrogen. And I have seven times two, 14 hydrogens. So I would have to add 14 hydrogens to this side. Now my hydrogens are balanced. So it says it's acidic, so I don't have to do that subroutine for OH minus, and I have got the elements balanced. The next thing I'm ready to balance is the charge. So what we do is we look at the total charge on both sides, and I have to make sure that they get to be the same. Right now, I've got 14 positives and two negatives. At this point, I have 12 positives in total. Over here, I have two times three, I have six positives. Okay, so it's definitely not balanced. Now, the only way that I can make the charges balanced is by adding electrons, and electrons are negatively charged. So we've got to make sure we add them to the correct side so that we bring the charges to the same. Now you're adding negative things, so you're going to be bringing a big number down by adding electrons. We're going to take this big number and bring it down by adding six electrons. As soon as we do that, then over on this side I have a plus six charge to go along with that plus six charge. And that is a balanced half reaction. Now we're ready to balance this half reaction. It we balance elements other than oxygen and hydrogen first, so that would be carbon. Two carbons, one carbon. We need two carbons. Now we're ready to balance the oxygen next. There are four oxygens and there are two times two, four oxygens, so our oxygen is already balanced. Now we're ready to balance the charge. On this side it's two negatives and this side it's zero, right? And we're going to add electrons. Electrons bring down the bigger side. I said that this was a total of a minus two and this is a total of zero. I have to bring this down. So I'm going to add two electrons here. Now, let's pause for just a moment here. One thing that has to happen, and you're going to know you had a made a mistake if this didn't happen, you have to have the electrons on opposite sides. Now once you write it on here, you know that this side is gaining electrons. This is the GER. This is a reduction half reaction. You do not need to go in there and do oxidation numbers of each atom and to decide who is, the re who is reduced. As soon as you see that I've added six electrons, at that point you know that this was reduced. And if one's reduced, the other one has to be oxidized, and I see that I have lost electrons. That's how we rep represent losing electrons. They're written on the product side. So this would be our oxidation half reaction. Okay, so now I have the two half reactions that are balanced. The next thing that we have to do is make sure that electrons gained and lost are the same number. You can't gain six electrons and only lose two. They have to be the same. So in this case, I'm going to multiply this whole reaction times some number so that we have the same number of electrons lost as we had gained. So what would that be? It would be a three. So, the next thing I want to do is make sure I don't lose track of things. I like to go ahead and rewrite this reaction with the 3 all the way through. So 3 c 2042 minus. When I make mistakes on this, it is usually because I'm trying to skip steps and I'm trying to just imagine those threes across the way. And then three times two is six carbon dioxides and two times three is six electrons. So this half reaction here and this half reaction can now be added together. When we add them together, 
I am going to cancel out any um, things that are the same on either side. And in this case, what is the same is always it better be the number of electrons are the same. Is there anything else? I don't see anything else that I can combine or cancel, so I'll bring it all together here at, I have Cr207, and if there's another place that students commonly make, make mistakes in, is they don't carry their, their charges everywhere, so make sure you do that. So I wrote that down, and I have 14 hydrogens from that first reaction up there, and that's everything on the reactant side here. I have c 204 and that has a two minus charge, right? So that's everything on the reactant side. And now we write everything that's on the product side. I have two chromiums, two Cr with a two plus charge. Nope, sorry, three plus charge. And I have seven waters. And I have six carbon dioxides. All right, so the last step says to check. Let's check. We have to make sure the atoms are balanced and then make sure the charges on either side balance. So I have two chromiums, two chromiums. Seven plus four, that's 11 oxygens. Seven, uh-oh, I lost something. Where did I lose it? I just now see that I lost it. Oh, <laughs> here we go, see that check? That check let me know that I lost track of something. I didn't put that three coefficient. I bet you you were yelling at me out there, okay? Did I do the six? I did. Okay, now let's try again. Make sure that we're balanced. The two chromiums, the two chromiums. The seven and three times four, 12 more. Seven and 12 is 19. Then over here I have seven and 12. So I have the same number of oxygens, whew, good. Then I have 14 hydrogens, and I have 7 times 2, 14 hydrogens, and it's balanced atom-wise. The next thing we have to do is make sure it's balanced charge-wise. So let's look at the total charge on the left-hand side. There's two negatives, there's 3 times 2, 6 more negatives, that's 8 negatives plus 14 positives, right? Um, for all of this, and what does that make? This gives me a plus six. Then we come over here and it's two times three, and everything else has no charge, so it's plus six. And at that point, I know that it's balanced. It has to be, because everything I needed to check is there. So now we have shown you how to do it in the acidic medium, okay? Notice there's H plus ions in there. That has to be present in order for this to balance. Okay, the next one we're going to work is this one, but we're going to show you what to do when it is in a basic solution. So now we're ready to do one in basic solution. We have the CN minus. Um, can you pair it up with its product? It would, of course, be the CNO minus, okay? So I've got that half reaction. And then I've got the MNO4 minus going to MNO2. And the MNO2 doesn't have a charge. I don't like the way that pen's writing, so let me change colors here. All right, so now, Step one, we look up here. We'll do this half reaction first. You make sure you balance the elements other than oxygen and hydrogen. One C, one C, one N, one N. It's balanced. Now we'll balance oxygen. One O, so we have to add one water. Okay? One O gives me that one water, but that messes up the hydrogen, and we learn that when you add um, when you mess up the hydrogens, you have to add H plus on the opposite side to do that. Now you ought to pause and make sure you find the rules to follow if you've turned and you don't have them handy. And read through what it says about what to do next with the uh, getting it out of acidic solution into basic solution. What it says is to add OH to both sides of the equation. It was balanced element-wise the way it was without this water, this o, OH minus. So if we add it on one side, it won't stay balanced unless we add it to the other side as well. So now 
it is still balanced element wise. But what happens over here, if two H's and two H OH's come together, you will turn this into two water molecules. Okay? The last thing I want to do is neaten it up a little bit because I have one molecule of water over here and two molecules of water over here. So this guy right here can cancel out with one of those and leave you with just one. So let me rewrite what we have here. We have CN minus, nope, yep, I left, there it is. Okay, CN minus plus 2OH minus going to CNO minus plus a water molecule double checking that my atoms are still balanced. One carbon, one carbon, one nitrogen, one nitrogen, two oxygens, two oxygens, two hydrogens. Now I want to balance the charges, okay? And you do that with electrons. On this side, I have a total of three negatives. On this side, I have a total of one negative. We add electrons. Electrons bring one of the sides down. We have to bring this one down to match that one. So I'm going to add two electrons. And we have a half reaction that's balanced. Now for the MnO4 minus half reaction. We balance the atoms other than oxygen and hydrogen first. They are balanced. We have one here and we have one here. Now we're ready to balance the oxygen. I have four oxygens and I have two oxygens. So I need to add two water molecules, right? Because that'll give me two oxygens. Soon as I do that, it brings hydrogens along for the ride. So I have to add four H pluses. That gets my hydrogens balanced. But since it's in basic solution, we don't leave those H pluses. We have to add four OH minuses, but we have to add it to both sides or it won't stay balanced. Now what'll happen here is those will come together and give me four waters. Okay, and then I can clean it up a little bit. Look, I have two waters and four waters. So I can get rid of those two waters with two of these waters and that will give me the half reaction of MnO4 minus plus two waters going to MnO2, no charge, plus four OH minus. Let's double check that it is balanced as we see it. One manganese, one manganese, four plus two, that's six oxygens, two plus four, six oxygens, four hydrogens, four hydrogens. Now let's balance the charge on this side. I have got a total of a negative one on this side. Okay, total of negative one on this side. And on this side, I have a negative four. We add electrons to make sure that the charges are the same. You bring down the charge by adding electrons to one side. I need to bring this down a little further, so I'm going to add three electrons. That's going to bring this side down to a negative four. So now I've got my second half reaction. Again, check. Don't go any further until you make sure your electrons are on opposite side. Loss of electrons, this has an oxidation half reaction. Gain of electrons, this is my reduction half reaction. So this reaction here, I'm going to take it and multiply it by three. I'm looking for the least common multiple between three and two. And I'm gonna take this one and I'm going to multiply it by two. That'll give me six electrons gained and six electrons lost. Now so that I can make sure I don't make a mistake in front of you guys, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this reaction with the times three. That would be three CN minus, well, can't write CN to minus apparently, three CN minus plus six OH minus, yielding three CNO minus plus three waters, plus six electrons. And I'm gonna rewrite this one with the times two. I have six electrons plus MnO4 minus plus, sorry, times two, plus two times. Then I have two times two, I have four waters. And I have two MnO2s and I have eight OH minuses. 
So those are my two half reactions with the same number of electrons lost as I have gained. Now we're going to add these two guys together. When I add them together, I could add them everything in there and bring it down, or I could do a little canceling first if I wanted to. So I'm going to cancel first. I have six electrons and six electrons. Those electrons better always cancel. I have six OHs on the left side of the arrow, eight OHs on the right side of the arrow. So these will go away and I'll be left with two. I have four waters and three waters, so this will go away and I'll be left with one water here. And I believe that's everything that can cancel. I can bring down what I see. I have three C and minus, that's this guy, plus two MnO4 minus this guy, plus a water, and I believe that's everything on the products reactant side. On the product side, I have three CNO minus. I have two MNO2s, no charge, and I have two OH minuses. So let's see if it's indeed balanced. We make sure the atoms are balanced, three carbons, three carbons, three nitrogens, three nitrogens, two manganese, two manganese, four plus one, that's no, four times two, right? Four times two is eight plus one is nine. Oxygens, then I have three plus four plus two more, that's nine. So I have the right number of oxygens, two hydrogens, two hydrogens, atoms are balanced. Now what about charge? Total charge on this side would be three minuses plus two more minuses, that's a negative five. And on this side, three minuses, two more minuses, a negative five. So I know it has to be balanced because the atoms are balanced and the charges are balanced. Now, we're going to let you try one, okay? Let's have you, I'll leave all this up here, it doesn't matter. Let's look at this guy. I want you to stop this video because I'm going to be asking you some questions about this one. I want you to stop it and I want you to follow the rules and get this thing balanced. And then when we resume, I'll ask a question or two. All right, you're back with me. Hopefully you did the work. There's a half reaction that had the ClO3 minus going to Cl2. When you took that half reaction and you balanced it, okay, I, I've got two things I want to ask you about it. The first thing is, what is the coefficient in front of the water. How many water molecules did you need? And I'm talking about only this one half reaction here. How many water molecules did you need? And how many electrons did you need in order to balance that half reaction? Well, did you come up with A? If you did, you did it correctly. And you probably finished it out just fine. If you did pick A, or if you didn't get this when it was all said and done, then you have some mistakes along the way. What I will do is not make you watch this, but I will create a supplemental video of me walking through the um, half reaction. Let's get it written there. I will do this problem for you as a supplemental video to see uh, maybe where you went wrong that caused you not to get this. But if you didn't get this, I want you to see if you can find your error. There's so many places that you can go astray. All right, so up next, what we're gonna do is get to the heart of electrochemistry. We want to see how you get electricity out of these redox reactions. The device, the apparatus that we use is called a voltaic cell or a galvanic cell, two different names for the same thing. So we'll focus on that in our next lesson.